In lesson eight, I want to talk a little bit about page properties, and we'll start with general stuff, and then from there we'll kind of um, move on to formatting, more advanced things, customized things, and all that stuff. Um, so basically, the first thing I want to do is I want to go to Google again. They have been a tremendous resource for us. Thanks, Google. All you uh, programming geeks make the world go round. And I want to kind of give you guys a little brief description um, into well into description and keywords and why they're so important. Now there are gajillions, fajillions, mofillions, babillions, whatever the hell fake word you use to represent a whole shitload of websites out there. There's a whole lot of websites out there. What sets them apart is basically the content that you have written on them. So when a search engine goes through, like if you're looking for, I don't know, like let's let's say Rockstar. I don't know. Let's search, type the word Rockstar. Actually, wait. I'm going to go back. I'm going to search for my band's website because I, I play in a rock band and my band's name is Wiredrawn. Wiredrawn is an actual word. Uh, I believe it means something along the lines of to um, to do something with art or violence or something to create art. I don't know. I forget. But if I type the, the word Wiredrawn and press enter, I should have a whole lot of results. The first result is my band. Wiredrawn.net. Okay, so Google finds my band because uh, we are Wiredrawn.net. Now another thing that sets us apart from the next one down, which is the definition of the word Wiredrawn. Excuse me, I just hiccuped. Is right in here. We have a description. Now this is an old description. Uh, what what Google actually does is it sends out little bots out onto the web and it searches through websites and it grabs descriptions and keywords and puts them in here. So if I had, this is what I had back when uh, the Google bot found wiredrawn.net, um, it actually found this in our description and it put it up on the web, on its search engine. So that's why it's really, really important. Um, so we need to make sure that we have stuff in here that's relevant to our web page so that search engines can find us very easily and other people can stumble upon our sites without having to search like crazy. So minimize Google. The first thing I want to do is teach you guys how to set up keywords and descriptions. Open up context and we're going to go ahead and open up our, go back up, open up our start proggy file and then say this as lesson 8, capital L, huh, 08.htm. Alright, and uh, let's go in here and open up lesson 8. Cool. One of the one of the really main things that will distinguish our page is our title. Of course, we've already learned that. So we're going to do um, our own. So it's going to be my website. That's the title of our web page. I save it up here in the title bar. It will say my website. Okay, there's one thing that sets us apart from everybody else. Next, I want to describe what a meta tag is. A meta tag is basically these description things that we're talking about. They will go inside of the head tags. Whoops. I wonder how long I've had this here. Probably since the beginning. Let me go ahead and fix that problem. How come you guys didn't tell me that? <laughs> Save it. I gotta go back and fix all my proggies now. It's gonna go in between our head tags. Okay? Um, so what I wanna do is start a meta tag. And that is M-E-T-A. And what I wanna do is first, we're gonna say name equals, and we're going to do a description of our page, so we're going to type description, D-E-S-C-R-I-P-T-I-O-N, I guess that's how you spell it, end quote, then we're going to do a space, and then we have to actually write the content, so that's going to be content equals, and uh, inside these quotes is going to be what our content is, and of course we will end our tag, and then uh, next we're going to do a, uh, a keyword, that's set up almost the exact same way. We'll set up a meta tag, M-E-T-A, and then we'll do uh, name equals, oops, equals, and instead of description, you got it, key words. And again, content equals. So we set up our keywords and our description. So our description is basically, we can make it a paragraph. That's the best way to do it. So I'm going to write, this is the best damn web page ever known to mankind. I don't know if mankind is one word or not, but um, this is what the description of my page is. Now let me say this. Where do you think it's going to display this? 
You think it's going to be up here? Let's check it out. Oh my goodness, it doesn't show it anywhere. But if I go to view, and if I go to source, it's written inside my source code. So if you wanted to give a shout out or say this program was written by Kevin and you guys suck ass because I'm the best guy ever, you can write that in there. Nobody will see it unless somebody actually reads your code. And when the bots on these search engines go out and try to organize their search engines and put your stuff in there to organize it nice and good, it's going to use this. So just like on the wire drawn search, you know, this is what it it says in here, if our website went up and we searched for the best damn website ever, we'd probably get this, and this is what it would say. So I'm going to close this, minimize this. So next we're going to set up our keywords. Keywords are basically single words or uh, a small phrase separated by commas and spaces. Let me give you an example. So if somebody searches for Rockstar, I want our website to come up, so I'm going to do Rockstar comma, space, and then I'll do HTML, comma, space, fun stuff, comma, space, programming, comma, space, and um, Baltimore, because that's where we're from, Maryland. <laughs> it's actually Maryland, not Maryland. So again, if I save this out and if I refresh my web page, we will not see this. However, if we view our source, by golly, it's sitting right there. Cool. So now we got that out of the way. Another thing I want to show you, other things that we can put inside this head tag, and there's two other things that I want to set up. Do you remember how when we set up a hyperlink? As a matter of fact, why don't we set up a simple hyperlink? A H R E F equals lesson one dot htm. Click here to see lesson one. Here's our simple simple hyperlink. Save it, and if I refresh it, I should have a hyperlink, and if I click on this, it'll open up lesson1.htm. Why it didn't, I don't know. Maybe it's because it's capital L. Let's try that. Actually, no, it's because it's lesson01. There we go. So it'll be lesson01.htm. Let's try that. Let me refresh it. Refresh. Still didn't work. What the hell? Oh, I don't have a lesson one. Lesson one was indexed. <laughs> Let's do lesson two instead. Lesson two. Click here to view lesson two. Save. All right, this will work. Back. Refresh. Here's lesson two that we did. Now, do you remember, in order for us to make that pop up in its own window, we had to set up a target. This will make it so when I click on the link, it'll open up in its own web browser. Okay? Pretty cool, pretty simple. Now let's just say, for instance, we want all of our links to open up in its own browser, and we don't want to type this every single time. We can do that up in the head tag. Let's erase that, save that. I'm going to come up here, I'm going to do one space below my meta tags. I'm going to set up a base. Base target equals underscore blank close it let's try it let me make sure it works before I gloat refresh opens up in its own browser cool and I don't have it specified down here what this is saying is I want all of my hyperlinks unless otherwise specified to open up in another browser now in the event and uh, let me get some code ready for you guys in the event you don't want your hyperlink to open up in its own browser, let's just say you have, I don't know, um, you've set up a hyperlink and um, you want all of your hyperlinks except for one to open up in its own browser. Okay, so we'll have, let me copy this, lesson, we'll do uh, a couple of them. There's lesson two, we'll do lesson three, we'll do lesson four, and we'll do lesson five. Save this out and refresh this. We're going to see all these written across the top here. For our purposes, this will be fine. If I click on this one, it'll open up lesson three. If I click on this one, it'll open up lesson four. And they're all in their own browsers. So, all right, I'm, I'm going to be kind of picky because uh, you guys had nothing better to do than watch this. Give me a second. <laughs> okay. 
So this will open up all the different ones in their own browser. Let's say, for instance, I want 2 and 3 to open up in its own browser and 4 and 5 to open up in this own regular page here. And by default, I have all of my links set to open up in a blank, which is its own own, uh, own window. 1 and 2 will continue that fine. Now, I want to specify for these next two where I want them to open. Very easy. All we got to do is target equals, and instead of blank, we're going to do underscore self. I'm going to copy that and paste it to the one right below it. Save it. And uh, let me, again, before I gloat, make sure it works. Let's see. Five. Good. Four. Good. Three. Good. All right. If you guys didn't catch that, target self opens up in its own self. So it opens up in the same web browser. Whereas by default, unless it's specified to open up in its own web browser, it will open up in its own blank. Okay, this will open up here, these will open up in their own browsers. Hopefully that wasn't too confusing. Now what I want to do again is I want to do one more thing. And this is kind of neat. And we don't actually have sound on our computer, but I'm pretty sure you guys do um, or know someone that does. What we want to do is we want to have a sound effect playing in the background. Okay, so um, here's how we can do that. Let me go, I'm going to take bass up here because you guys understand that. And then right here, it's going to be in our head tag. We're going to do a beautiful, fun little command called BG for background sound. And then we're going to do a search just like for an image. So instead of doing an image search, we're doing a sound search. And then equals, and then in here, we're going to do our sound dot wave file and the quote. And then we're going to choose it to loop. We can choose it here to loop as many times as we want. It could be five times. It could be 300 times, or we can cause it to be infinite. If you do negative one, it will loop forever. Now, again, we don't have any sound on our computer, but if I save this, hopefully nothing screws up. If we had a sound effect, it would be playing. Now, where do you get a sound effect? Well, record it yourself, make sure that it's a WAV file, and put it in your base directory. Let's just say we don't have one. We want to get one off of the web. Go to Google. We'll search for uh, free sound effects, and uh, I think there's a really good website somewhere that I like. And we'll just click. We just want to get a WAV file from the web, and we want to link it to our website. So we'll do. We got sound effects. Let's see if we can find some music. Ambient city, oh, city sounds. Okay, see, I don't have any sound effects, so I don't know how this is going to sound. I click on city sounds, and uh, ambulance construction. Let's find something that's kind of cool. Car traffic. All right, we'll do this. We'll do car traffic. Now, you know, car traffic would be good. Let's say we're writing a website that does traffic, and we want to kind of intensify that by having car traffic noises. If you look down here, and when I put my mouse cursor over this, it shows me the link to a dot .wav file. If I click on that, I believe, let's see what Windows is going to ask. Windows is going to say, do you want me to automatically play this? And uh, I'm going to choose no for uh, what it just asked me. And now it's going to open up my media player. But unfortunately, I don't have any sound installed. See, Windows cannot play. There's a problem with your sound device because I didn't install one. Because I don't need one for what I'm doing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right-click on here, and I'm going to copy the shortcut. Open up context. And in here, I'm going to select my sound.wave, hold control and V, and now I pasted it in there. So I have this sound effect on my website of city traffic playing in the background, looping forever. Save, back to my website, refresh. You can see how it's downloading the data from that website, already downloaded. If I had a sound card installed, it would be playing. But since I don't, I don't hear anything. You guys should hear something. So that's basically um, what I wanted to look at right now as far as our general page uh, page properties. Uh, we're going to move on to a little bit more formatting, advanced stuff in the next one. Do this a million times. Get used to it. See you later.